Hey, welcome, or oh, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that I am a part of a collab that is doing a film a series of films, if you count all of us, for one particular very special lady on YouTube. That lady is the beautiful Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977. Regular viewers will know her, I've collabed many times, and I absolutely adore the woman. Unfortunately, recently. Her baby Mojo had to leave, which understandably devastated her. And there's a group of us who love her and just want to let her know how loved she is. So we decided that it would be really nice if we did a tribute film for Mojo in his colours, black, white and grey. Some of us are including orange, which is known as favourite colour. But I really hope that you'll all enjoy this film. That you'll go over and show Nona some love. And that you'll enjoy seeing just how many different looks can be created using effectively maximum four colours. Black, white, grey maybe orange, just to give you an idea of just how versatile makeup can be. So, without further ado, here's my tribute to Mojo. Love you, Nona. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right. I would have told you a little bit in the intro about what this is about, but um, long-term viewers of my channel will know that I have collabed with the beautiful Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977 on a number of occasions, both um, on her own as part of the Bitches of Eastwick and as part of larger collab groups. Um, she absolutely adores her animals. They are her babies, they are her children. And unfortunately, very recently, Mojo, her beautiful dog, who I should put a picture of up here, when he was puppy and then when he was a very, very grown big boy, um, unfortunately he had a, a problem and had to cross the Rainbow Bridge, uh, not to put too fine a point on things. Which obviously has devastated Nona and I was added to a collab group which was started because we all love Nona and we wanted to show her some support and show her we're thinking of her. So we decided in honour of Mojo we're going to get our Mojo on by doing an eye look inspired by Mojo. Mojo is black, white and grey and Nona's favourite colour is orange. So that will give you an indication of the colour palette that I'm going to be using today. And I'm going to go in with three different indie palettes. I'm going in with the Certify Destiny Certified Tropical Wonders and Blush Tribe Neon. Now, the Blush Tribe Neon was sold as defective because it doesn't work very well when you want to blend them. But it's fine when you want to pack them on. But they've got a couple of really gorgeous neon oranges there just for the pop of colour for Nona's favourite colour. And then uh, Certify has got a white, a dove grey and a black 
this is the Tropical Wonders and then the Certified Destiny palette has got a mid-tone grey and a crystal silver colour so that's the uh, palettes I'm going to be drawing from um, I will very very quickly as always talk you through the eye look um, I've got deep set eyes which are very often mistakenly referred to as hooded lids I'm just going to talk you through the two different types of shape how you can work out which sort of eye you have and how you can follow any tutorial that you find with a little tip but it's different depending on your eye shape now because I'm a teaching channel there's a widget up there if I'm going too slowly for you because I want even absolute beginners to be able to follow me plus chronic pain kind of off the chart right now so I may have to take regular pauses when I'm blending uh, just speed me up I'm really not going to be offended by that all of the other people in this collab at the moment as far as I'm aware it's just ladies but we could have some gentlemen at it so I'm going to say all the other people in this collab I will have listed in some manner in my description box whether that's just their YouTube channel or whether there's a playlist I'm yet to work that out I'll work that out when I'm uploading it um, but yeah right let's get you zoomed in and just talk you through the eye look right as I said I've got deep set eyes um, I have heard them referred to recently as being double lidded eyes now I get the same issue that people with hooded lids get in that I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I can't just cut the socket I have to go up onto the upper lid and when I use glitter glue ew, and then I will get a bare patch right through there let me talk you through when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed you can see all of my mobile lid inner to outer corner can't see much of it but you can see it so I've not got hooded lids it's only if your static lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of your mobile lid that you've got a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye now deep set eyes if I cover the visible mobile lid and close my eye can you see I've got as much space again up to the crease that folds back away and then if I cover the visible static lid and do the same you can see I've got skin there that folds back in and it's those two pieces of skin rubbing together that give me the same issue that people with hooded lids have so now you've established which type of eye you've got this is how you deal with the situation if you have a hooded lid grab a brush something like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall obviously this will reduce the space between your crease and your brow so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than the person doing the tutorial and you'll be absolutely fine if you're one of my deep set eye babies when you are blending a colour through your crease every so often oh sorry I'm recording this late at night because pain levels it's the earliest I've been able to actually sit down for more than two minutes at a time without wriggling uh, when you're blending through your crease every so often just sit relax your brows and just check you've come up high enough here to see when your eyes are relaxed just make sure you come up high enough and you can see the colour just above that crease there so you can see it's very very different ways of dealing with the situation that's why it's important to make sure you get your eye shape right okay I'm going to start off with this Luxie 205 tapered blending brush really blown out very soft round brush if you've had to move your crease up go for a slightly smaller one to start with and I'm going to start off with uh, I think I'm going to go in with a bit of Typhoon from Tropical Wonders is this Tropical Wonders? yeah Tropical Wonders palette I love it because on the front it's got a lion 
but on the inside it's got one of my favourite animals, the Nephlump. Yeah, that. Love it. Right. So I've popped some Tycoon on here and I'm just going to start blending this through. Um, the only thing I've got on my eyes at the moment is my Crow and Pebble eyeshadow primer. All details for that are linked in the description box. The best eye primer I've ever used because it's not sticky. Which means you don't have to set it and you can blend on it straight away, as you can see. Without having to worry about losing any depth of colour. Now I'm actually building this colour up gently because I'm not sure how dark I want to go initially. So I'm just very very gently blending and building this colour up. Now I go in circles because it gently moves the skin around on your eyelid. So if you're like me and you've got looser eyelids because you're older or like me you've lost a lot of weight. Actually both of those things apply to me but never mind. Um, it just helps stopping you from getting like a barcoding or a white stripe effect. Now I go in this direction when I come away from the nose. A little bit of a bounce and then opposite direction when you come back in. A little bit of a bounce. Think of it as the Viennese waltz blending technique. You have natural turns, you have reverse turns and every so often you've got a little bit of a fleckle just there. Yes, Strictly Come Dancing has restarted. Yes, I love ballroom dancing. Yes, I want Anton Dubeck to win. Do I think it'll happen? He's actually not got an old bird this time. That's a nice change. They normally stick in with the clunker. Uh, he's actually got someone he might actually win with today. Which is good. It's nice to actually see him. I mean, he's... He's been on the show right from the very, very first episode. Um, and there's only been, I think, one or two years that it's been going. I mean, it's, it's, it's like 12th or 13th, maybe 14th season now. Um, and there's only been a couple of times that he's actually been given someone who isn't my age or older, basically. 45, for those of you wondering. Right, as you can see, I'm doing the same thing on this eye. Now, unless you're James Charles and you Photoshop your eye look once you've finished it for Instagram, your eyes are not symmetrical. So I sit back and just check you've got same depth of colour and same shape both at the sides. So I need to build this one up a little bit more. Yes, Nona absolutely adored Mojo. Well, she loves all of her animals, but she adored Mojo. She put a beautiful photo, the one that I showed you earlier, um, of when Mojo was a little and when her nephew was a little and Mojo was like, you know, sort of hanging on to the back of the little one's shorts and nappy kind of thing. Um, and then again, when he was this big gentle giant, and uh, I know she was absolutely devastated. I've been in the same position myself where I've had to make the choice of do I let the animal continue in pain or do I do what's right for them and not what I actually want. It's a, hor it's a horrible position to be in. It leaves you feeling awful for days and days and weeks afterwards. So. I'm not going to suggest for one minute that looking at a bunch of eye looks is going to take away her pain, but it might just show her there's a lot of people out there who are thinking of her and who love her to bits and just want her to know that. Right, I'm just going to go into the Certified Destiny palette. Same brush, not going to clean it off because I'm going in with the grey again, but it's just a darker one. And I'm going into Potion. Love Potion number nine. That travels down to Madeline. I better stop, otherwise, I'll have someone trying to claim it for copyright, won't I? <clears throat> Harvey loves it when I sing that one. And for those of you who are new to my channel, hi, I'm half Welsh, which means uh, I sing quite a bit. Um, apologies if that bugs you. Just speed widgets up there. <laughs> Free to use it. I really won't be offended, because let's face it, sweetie. Unless you tell me. I'm not going to lie. 
And even if you do, just pay me up and tell me. I don't mind. I understand. I follow a lot of channels and there's days when I think, holy crap, how am I going to watch all these films? I'm going to have to watch them at one and a half. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to watch them all. So, I totally get it. I know that my films are a bit longer. But when I was starting to learn how to do makeup and was watching YouTube tutorials for inspiration of something other than the 80s technique that I liked and I'd stuck with for many, many years, um, <clears throat> it was really difficult to follow sometimes because they'd just do the one eye. And you'd be like, well, um, okay, thanks, but how, how, how did you do that on the other eye? And you have to kind of rewind the tutorial and try and remember how to do it backwards. Or they'd, they'd speed the blending up, or they'd cut some of the blending out. You're like, whoa, how, how did you blend it that quickly? It's like, mm, mine's not blending that quickly. So I always said if I started a channel, it would be absolutely beginner friendly. I want someone who's never picked up a brush before to still be able to feel confident that they can follow one of my tutorials. And I really hope that if you are new to makeup, that you do feel that. Now this side I've got very very deep creasing because my eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic when I was five years old. This is the eye I'm blinding for those of you who are new. And you can see what I mean now about the barcoding effect. Now normally on most people's eyes doing this circular movement that I've been doing will stop you from getting that. But because my creasing here is so deep I do have to just stretch my lid out a little bit this side. Don't do that unless you absolutely have to or you will end up with deep set creases and I promise you, you won't like it. Right, I've got a microfiber cloth here that I use for cleaning my brushes off on. I find it's more gentle on the bristles than a colour switch and actually more effective because if you've got um, I, know, I noticed it with Jeffrey's blood sugar. I had to buy a separate colour switch to use just for blood sugar because the pigments on there were so strong. I'd go in the next day to clean a brush and it'd come out bright pink from the colours I've been using the day before. So I much prefer using a microfiber cloth and just banging it in the washing machine. Much easier. Right, let's find myself a slightly smaller blending brush. Right, I'm going to go in with this one. This is the Morphe M562. It is clean. It's just stained. And I'm going to go back into the Tropical Wonders palette. And I'm going to go into Bonobo, which is this black down here. So there are a lot of people in this. It was uh, Anya Stamper who actually invited me to the group. So thank you, darling. Much appreciated. And she said, I know it's really, really short notice. She said, but, because she knows that, you know, how much I think of, of Nona and her and all my friends that I've made on YouTube. But, you know, Anya, Nona and I, we are the bitches of Eastwick. And you can see what I've done there. I've just gone through in a windscreen wiper movement. But now I'm going to relax my brows. And you can see I need to come up a little bit higher in the middle here for that black to be seen. Obviously, if you've moved your bra your crease line, you will be following wherever your crease line is. So I'm just going to do little circular movements all the way along, just to buff the end out. I'm just making sure that in the middle there, I buff it out a little bit higher, just so that it's slightly more visible. There we go. See? That's simple. I'm just going to flick up at the outside here, just to give the illusion of a wing. Without having to use liner. This is a great tip if you're not sure on using liner. You can just use a really, really fine liner, br a fine liner brush or blending brush like this and you can give the illusion of a wing which will draw the eye out and give it that elongated cat shape and lift it up at the edges and give you a more youthful look. 
without having to use liner. I have got a separate um, mini tutorial for how to do eyeliner though, if you did want to know how to do that. Um, and that's in my mini tutorial playlist. Um, I don't know if we're going to have a playlist put together for this. Um, if not, I'll have all of the ladies' channels, and if we have any gentlemen join gentlemen channels, um, listed in my description box. But we are all using exactly the same title. So if you're unsure, if you've seen them all, if you search for the title that I've got, minus my ASMR makeup at the end, um, you'll be able to pull up absolutely everybody's film. We're all uploading at the same time. So, and that's not a problem. My time in the UK is actually 9pm, so um, I'm going to guess that a lot of my UK followers will see this the next morning. So, hi. How's your cornflakes? Or have you got porridge? Or toasted? Or just a cup of coffee and a scowl? So my mother used to start the day. Actually, she used to start the day with a cup of coffee, 30 fags and a scowl. Let's not go there, eh? So again, I'm just checking that I've got the same shape this side. There we go, I just need you to come up a little bit more this side. And you can see how really easy that is. I'm really not worried about fallout because obviously I haven't done my base yet anyway, so and I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of this black just to put on the outer edge of my mobile lid because I'm probably going to follow this black down underneath once I've done my foundation. But you can, I hope you can see the difference that's made to the actual shape of the eye as well. So there'll be a link in Nona's channel as well. Because obviously we'd love for you to go and pop over and see her channel too. She's the queen of neutral looks, but she's getting into colour and she smashes it, I'm telling you. That girl has no fear, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. It really is. I love I love seeing her starting to experiment with colour. There was a film that she did um, a few days ago, might even have been last week actually, where she used uh, glitter for the first time and the joy in her voice when she first used glitter and saw how, pre how pretty it is and how how easy it actually is to apply if you've got a good glitter glue. I had to keep rewinding it and just watching it again and again because the joy in her face was just... Oh, it really lifted my day. It really did. Right. Now, let's grab one of these. Again, this is clean. It's just stained. This is a Jeffrey Morphe JS24 brush, if you're wondering. And I'm going to start off by going into Andrea, which is the lighter of the two oranges in the Blush Tribe, Neon Dreams. I have actually got one of their loose pigments named after me, but unfortunately the loose pigment didn't actually make the, um, the palette, which is a shame. I'm just, I've, I've got the pigment on both sides and I've just squirted it with some setting spray. You can use any liquid. You can use um, a moisturising spray like Max Fix Plus or Mario Badescu. You can use a setting spray, priming spray, moisturising spray, finishing spray. Heck, you can even just use water. But never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. Right, I'm going to go into this corner and just apply 
some of this pigment. I'm wondering if that might actually apply better dry. Let's try it dry. I don't mind if I get fallout. Yeah, when this palette was first released, initially, I think the first batch that came in was blending absolutely fine. So she released them as palettes. Um, but then unfortunately, I don't know if there was an issue with subsequent runs. But... Um, these don't like blending, so she's actually been selling them as defective. Uh, I'm wondering actually whether to put a little bit of glitter glue on there to see if that will help. I think it might. I'm just going to get the excess loose pigment off. And grab that brush and just... Sweep the black back in again. Right, I've got the NYX glitter glue. I had a sample of the Too Faced one, um, and to be honest, it was no better than this NYX one is. So, you really don't need to fork out for high end glitter glues because NYX does it absolutely fine it really does right uh, I've squirted some onto my little maybe uh, phone case and this is actually it's part of a nail art brush set that I bought I'm just gonna get some glitter glue on here I'm just gonna apply that to my lid just to help this neon pigment stick a bit better So, exactly the same way that you would do if you were laying down a glitter. I'm just going to pop that onto the lid area there. And do the same thing on the other eye. Well, on the other eye, I am going to have to stretch it out slightly. Otherwise, it'll fill up in the creases, and then I'll have the issue that uh, it'll all start crumbling down through the day, which is highly annoying, as opposed to highly gabrous. And I say, maybe with an athlete. Oh yeah, bad dad jokes as well. You get a lot of those on this channel. Blame my husband, he's master of the pun. And unfortunately, or fortunately, having been with him for so long, I appear to have picked up the habit. Right, let's try this again. Let's go back into that Andrea pigment. And let's see if we can get a bit more of an impact. Popping it on over a glitter glow. A little bit. I think it's gone a little bit smoother. Mind you, this is a problem with neon pigments. I mean, they do tend to, I don't know what it is, but something about um, the neon colour always seems to make it uh, a bit drier. Or at least every neon that I've used has been anyway. Loose pigments are a bit easier because obviously by virtue of them being a loose pigment they're easier to blend with than a pressed pigment is. But you can still get a decent effect but if you are going to buy the Neon Dreams palette do be aware that you're probably not going to be able to blend very easily with it but in terms of you know pops of colour on the lid or if you can do like a graphic eyeliner with it it'll be absolutely fine I will actually probably try um, 
doing graphic wins with these with this palette. But as you can see, in terms of pops of colour, it goes on great. And now I'm going to go into Anam, which is the deeper of the two oranges. Uh, problem is, in my viewfinder, my lights are completely bleaching that out. Hopefully, on the actual film, you'll be able to see the colours properly. Obviously, I'm getting hella fallout, but that really doesn't bother me. Just going to drag some of the lighter orange across onto the deeper orange, just to help blend where the two colours meet. I can see that pigment on my lashes. There we go. These really are pretty pigments and as I said if you're using them for popping of colour on the lid they can be absolutely fine and if you don't like working with loose pigments because you're a klutz like me and you're worried you're going to drop them fair point I have done many times um, then this would absolutely work for you, but just don't expect it to blend like a normal shadow would, basically. Same thing, take the excess off of there. Right, um, I'm going to pause you while I deal with this fallout. Um, I'll probably get a micellar wipe and just tidy those edges up. I will lob some mas uh, mascara, I'll lob some foundation on and I will be back to continue with this eye look. Now, for you, you don't have to wait at all. You're going to see me instantly. I, however, will not see you until the next time I press the record button. Please know that while I'm not talking to you, I am missing you. I'm also ever so slightly crazy, especially when it gets to this time of night. <laughs> right, I'll see you right now then, really. And I am back. As you can tell. I hope. Right, I'm going to go back in to the Tropical Wonders palette. And I'm grabbing my good old faithful flat top brush that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go back into a Bonobo which is the black, and like I said, I'm going to pull it down and run it along underneath my lash line. I always flinch this side because I don't have any peripheral vision, obviously, being blind in that eye, so I'm relying very much on muscle memory and a viewfinder uncomfortably far away when you haven't got a contact lens in. Right, now this brush is actually, believe it or not, uh, the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, but I love it because it's flat topped and it's chunky. So it's great for getting up under those lashes. And staying in this Tropical Wonders palette, I'm going into Typhoon, which is the lightest grey that I started with. And I'm just going to use that just to soften and grunge out that lower lash line. Because Anna Nona was a bit of a goth in her day. And I'm sure she would appreciate a nice grungy lower lash line. Also, I, um, I struggle with putting colours into my waterline because my eyes are so, so watery anyway with fibro. Um, 
that if I did put anything in there, my eyes would be watering so much that it would absolutely ruin the eye look within about 20 minutes. I have done it before now for makeup looks that I've done, taken photos of, and then instantly got a Q-tip or a cotton bud and taken it back out again. So now. Highlight wise, I am going to go in with my pure white Ofra Nikki Tutorials. I can open the damn thing. Glazed donut, because obviously my jo was black, white, and grey. This brush that I'm using is basically a lip brush that I bought off of eBay about a decade ago now, I would say. And I'm just going to run that along the tail of my brow, just to lighten that up a little bit. And then I'm going to come into the inner corner, and I like to come in underneath my tear duct as well, and just. Bring it down to make the colour that I've blended underneath my eyes. Right, I'm going to pause you one more time while I throw some highlight all over my face, well not all over my face, but in strategic places on my face. Uh, chuck some mascara on, choose a lippy, and I will be back. See you right now. There we go. I am back. Um, I used my Benefit Bag Girl Bang mascara today. And the lipstick is a Jeffree Star's Yummy. Because it's a gorgeous orange colour, which when you press your lips together, you get this gorgeous subtle mica. And obviously the highlight is just um, glowing like a disco ball. So, this is my tribute to Mojo. No, no, darling, I really hope that you've enjoyed this film um, and that all of these films just show you how special you are to so many people and how loved you are by so many people. I'm not going to go through my usual spiel. All I'm going to say is please make sure you go and watch all the other films in this collab and please go and check out Nona's channel give her some love let her see just how loved she is and that being a nice person on YouTube doesn't necessarily mean that you're not seen right there's Mojo There's Nona. Here's my finished look. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Love you, Nona. Bye for now.